Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Church Dogmatics by Emil Brunner. We're going to look at uh, 11b, pages 281 to 291 on the saving work of Christ. Uh, and there still will be a, another section on chapter 11. It's a long chapter, but this will be 281 to 291. And let's go to block one. Okay, we begin with the uh, understanding the priestly work of Christ. In the atone, uh, priestly work is the atonement that justifies sinners. Matthew 20, 28, the Son of Man came to give his life a ransom for many. To give his life, lutron antipalan, a ransom for many. We are reconciled through the coming of the Son. He restores personal relationship with our Father in heaven. He lifts us into communion through the justification through faith. And we're reminded in Luke 18:14 that anyone who exalts himself shall be abased. He that humbles himself shall be exalted. But Brunner says we're interpreting the cross as atonement. And that only occurred after the resurrection experiences. Then the cross was seen to have saving significance. Before that, it was a stumbling block. But the theological truth concerning the cross, it uh, evolved gradually. And it began by being linked with the Old Testament sacrificial system as sacrifice for atonement for restored communion. But it was a slowly developing theology. In the first century it was linked up with uh, the Old Testament sacrificial system. That was the uh, immediate understanding in the first century. Sacrifice for atonement. Now uh, Brunner is a reformer. Bart was a reformer. Brunner a reformer. And so now we're going to look at the reformer's position in block two. All right. The reformer's theory of satisfaction adopted from Anselm, the cross as paschal sacrifice through Christ's blood. The new covenant is established. Jesus is the Passover lamb. He liberates us from sin through the cross, new communion with God is established. God's action through Christ actually alters our situation. We are liberated for new life. We transition from separation to communion. In the cross, God is present and acting. Remember, the cross is what? Triune event. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all share in the sacrifice of the cross. The cross is the revealing, the atoning, and the redeeming act of God. The mystery of the cross is that it is God's saving act. Now, the Reformation theory of satisfaction that was adopted from Anselm, Anselm of Canterbury, 1033 to 1109, was a Catholic theologian, a Catholic bishop, and uh, he posited the theory, the theology, that the incarnation and the cross were an absolute necessity. They had to be. This theology was adopted by the Reformation, and it is part of Protestant history today. And we can't forget that. You know, as Protestants, our heritage is Catholic. I mean, you can't ignore that. And uh, the Reformers rejected works righteousness. They re rejected doing penance because they discovered the Greek meaning for repentance, metanoia. That was Martin Luther's. So they, they protested against works righteousness, but they accepted uh, Anselm's theology. So we have a heritage as Protestants in Catholic theology. 
So this theology was adopted by the Reformation. It's part of Protestant history today. Then we are taken to Romans 3.25. And I put the literal translation in here from the Bible Hub app. I use the Bible Hub app a lot. Whom God sent forth as a propitiation through faith in his blood as a showing forth of righteousness because of a forbearance remission having taken place beforehand in the forbearance tolerance of God. That's a literal translation from the Bible Hub app that you can get for free online. And I highly recommend that app. It's very good. But that's a literal translation of 325. And you notice it links together atonement and faith. It links together atonement and faith. The objective and the subjective are linked together in Romans 3.25. Whom God sent forth as a propitiation through faith in his blood as showing forth of righteousness because of a forbearance remission having taken place beforehand. in the forbearance tolerance of God. So I, I love that verse because atonement, sacrifice for atonement, is coupled with faith, and it must be coupled with faith. That is uh, taught by Christ, that's taught by the Apostle Paul, and uh, especially here in Romans. So uh, Bruner brings that up, and it uh, makes a strong point. In fact, I think that uh, Romans 3.25 really does uh, give us the uh, position adopted by the Reformers. But uh, they did adopt it from uh, the Catholic theologian Anselm. Martin Luther rejected works, works righteousness. He rejected doing penance because uh, he discovered the Greek concept of Menonoia, repentance, did not translate do penance. It was a translated change of mind, change of heart. And that started the Reformation. Martin Luther reading the Greek New Testament. That began. And uh, also, Martin Luther reading Romans 117 that we are justified by faith. But uh, the Reformers rejected works righteousness. They rejected doing penance. They did not reject everything. Martin Luther adopted the Catholic theologian's work, Anselm, and that became a part of the Reformation. So we need to keep that in mind as Protestants that our heritage is in many respects, Catholic. So I have a Catholic brothers and sisters I truly appreciate and truly love. And uh, we have to remember that. What was the one commandment given by Christ at the Last Supper? Love one another as I have loved you. I, give you, I leave you with one commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. That defines the relationship between Protestants and Catholics. It's supposed to be a relationship of loving one another as Christ has loved us, period. No debate. No debate. Period. That's it. Martin Luther did adopt the Bishop Anselm's theory of satisfaction. Martin Luther rejected the doctrine of penance, because he discovered the Greek concept menonoia for repentance in the book of Romans and knew that it translated change of mind, not do penance. We've got to keep that uh, in focus, okay? Our heritage as Protestants includes Catholic theology. Now, did it become refined? Has it, has it become refined over the years? Of course it has. We're talking, uh, this is Middle Ages here. Well, even prior to, this is uh, 1033 to 1109 for Anselm, 1500s for Martin Luther. But yes, we've 
done a great deal of refining of Christian doctrine. And we do not compromise core beliefs. And our core belief clings very firmly to uh, Romans 3.25, whom God sent forth as a propitiation through faith in his blood, as a showing forth of righteousness because of a forbearance remission having taken place beforehand. Before the foundation of the world in the forbearance tolerance of God. Bible Hub, literal translation. And now we have a very brief conclusion by Brunner. Let's go to block three. It's very brief, but uh, that'll give us a very powerful conclusion. The necessity for divine revelation. Atoning event and act of faith go together in the New Testament. Reconciliation is an act as encounter. It has an objective and a subjective side in dialogue with each other. By ourselves, we cannot work our way out of separation from our Father. It can only be healed by God's act of revelation in Christ, in the cross, and the resurrection. And at the cross, we gather for encounter. We encounter the triune Godhead. We encounter the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in the cross. The triune Godhead in its entirety participated in the cross. And through the cross, separation from God was taken up into the triune Godhead itself and overcome by the resurrection. Therefore, all those who are in Christ shall never be separated from God our Father in heaven. That 12 to 3 darkness symbolized separation. And that separation was overcome in resurrection. Separation from God was taken up into the triune Godhead at the cross and overcome in the resurrection by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three, the cross and resurrection are both a triune event. Both are a triune event. So we need to remember, first of all, block one, note three. The cross became interpreted as atonement after the resurrection experiences. Then the cross, by viewing the cross through resurrection, it was seen to have saving significance. The theological truth of this evolved gradually, and it was linked with the Old Testament sacrificial system as sacrifice for atonement in order to restore communion. In other words, a very Jewish understanding helped the first century church. In block two, note three, the Reformation theory of satisfaction was adopted from Anselm of Canterbury, 1033 to 1109, a Catholic theologian, a Catholic bishop. He posited the theology that the incarnation and the cross were an absolute necessity they had to be in order to redeem humanity. This theology was adopted by the Reformation, by Martin Luther, and it's a part of our Protestant history today. Romans 3:25 whom God sent forth as a propitiation through faith in his blood, as a showing forth of righteousness because of a forbearance remission having taken place before the foundation of the world in the forbearance tolerance of God. Literal translation. Atoning event and act of faith go together in the New Testament. We are saved through the act as encounter. We encounter God by gathering at the cross of Christ. And through the resurrection, we view and understand the cross as atonement, as deliverance, as liberation from slavery to sin, as salvation, as justification, and as sanctification. 
That's going to wrap up uh, 281 to 291 on the saving work of Christ. And uh, we will conclude a very good chapter 11 next time. 293 to 307. 293 to 307. Next time it will conclude the chapter. But this is a very powerful uh, 11b. Uh, 281 to 291 on the saving work of Christ.